I do. I had a beauty. It was orange. It wasn't red. All right, amen. Psalm 119, if we are in part 10 uh, of this series of, uh, we just entitled this A Journey uh, Through Psalm 119, and I hope that it's been a blessed journey for you uh, as we're going to uh, look at uh, verses 73 uh, through 80 tonight. And uh, uh, again, an another great uh, stanza uh, here, uh, going through the Hebrew alphabet, 22 letters, uh, <clears throat> and actually this uh, uh Word job. This is the uh, smallest. Um, uh, this is the, 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 the Hebrew equivalent to uh, the jot uh, that's in um, uh, the jot and the tittle that's mentioned in, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the New Testament about God's word. And so um, it has really the idea, ironically, uh, of a hand uh, too. And, uh, and that's what this uh, uh, stanza starts off with. And uh, I, I tell you, I hope this will, uh, you know, get a hold of our hearts um, that God made us, that God made us, and he made us for a purpose. Uh, let's turn it over, first of all, before we read the past scripture. Let's turn to uh, Revelation um, uh, uh, chapter 4, <clears throat> Revelation chapter 4. And uh, verse 11, Revelation 4, verse 11. This is uh, the heavenly scene, the heavenly worship. And of course, uh, John in the book of Revelation is going from earth to heaven, heaven to earth. And, and here in uh, Revelation chapter 4, uh, verse 11, uh, the, the 24 elders are, are falling down at the throne. They're worshiping God. And they're casting their crowns. Uh, this is a representation, I believe, of the church and of the Old Testament uh, uh, saints, uh, the, 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 the uh, patriarchs. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, verse 11, he says, uh, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. There, there's not a human being uh, that can uh, 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 not know, if they want to know, why they were created, right? Because God says right here that, that God created you and he created me for his pleasure. So oftentimes people, you know, they say, well, I'm, I'm searching for the will of God. Well, you can know for sure Whatever the will of God is for your life, it is to bring pleasure to God. And so you can ask yourself this question on a daily basis. Am I bringing pleasure to God? Is that my life? Do I wake up in the morning? Do I have my own agenda? Do I live my life throughout the day with my own agenda? Or is my life God's agenda? Do I give my life to him and say, God, here I am. It's, it's your life. It's what you want work through me. Which is it? For the most part, it's we do our own thing. And we got to ask God to help us with that. And uh, he wants to and desires to. But he's not going to force us. And praise God, he doesn't force us. Amen? Uh, that he, doesn't, he didn't make robots. And uh, he made people and gave us a free will and a free choice. And, and that is a great gift that God gave us. That we can choose him and we can love him. And uh, I pray that we would do that. Let's read the verses, then we'll come back down through them and uh, glean what God would have us to get uh, from this tonight. He said in verse 73, Psalm 119, he said, Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in thy word. I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thou in faithfulness hast afflicted me. Let, I pray thee, thy merciful kindness be for my comfort according to thy word unto thy servant. Let thy tender mercies come unto me that I may live, for thy law is my delight. Let the proud be ashamed, for they dealt perversely with me without a cause. 
but I will meditate in thy precepts. Let those that fear thee turn unto me, and those that have known thy testimonies. Let my heart be sound in thy statutes, that I be not ashamed. What a passage of scripture, amen. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful that you have made us. We pray, God, that you would speak to our hearts as we uh, glean uh, from this passage of Scripture and learn about you and about ourselves. We praise you and thank you for this opportunity to meet like this, and we pray you continue to help us to enjoy meeting like this and uh, give us, guide us and direct us into all truth here tonight. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Now, this is just a really an incredible thought. Again, as I was going back through this again, just had a, a great time with the Lord, thinking about uh, in the garden and uh, how God, again, and, and again, not just, not just God in the sense, but God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit fashioned Adam in the garden out of the dust of the ground. And what, a, what a blessing to know that the triune God, this is what he said. He said, let us make man in our own image. That's incredible, folks. If we just had that, we should be excited. Amen? We are made in God's image, the triune God. And that ought to be exciting to us, that God. And then the Bible says that he breathe into man's nostrils. And what does it say there? The breath of life. Can you imagine being Adam? <laughs> Can you? Uh, really, a, a, a lifeless, uh, in, in the sense of, he, he was like the animals, Right? A lot of people think that animals don't have souls, but they do. <laughs> they do have souls. <laughs> but they're not living souls. They do have emotions, but they don't have living emotions like you and I do. They, they cannot relate to God like you and I can. Praise God. Folks, listen. What a blessing that God made us and fashioned us, amen, into his image. And one day... We're going to be like him. Amen. What, what a day that's going to be. And so the psalmist here, David, he said, Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. And then rightfully so, what comes right after that? Give me understanding. Right? Because God has made you. God has made me. We, we, we. How many of you here would readily admit you know that you are inquisitive, that you are a curious George. I mean, we all are. We all have that within us about everything else but God. And see, that again, that's fleshly. That's the nature of man. We want to find out everything. You know, just Lisa giving the prayer request tonight. How many of you want to know? What's her name? Katie? How many want to know what Katie's problem is? I mean, we, how, how do, and here's, here's what's, how do I pray if I don't know what her request is? <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? Is that really why we want to know the request? So we can pray for her better. <laughs> yeah, right. We're lying to ourselves. We're, we, we, we're inquisitive people. We're curious about everything but God. The psalmist here, he said, you, you've made me, you've fashioned me. Give me understanding. And here it is. That I might, might learn, may learn thy commandments. If you want to know why you were made, learn God's commandments. God's commandments, listen, are not something to hinder you. They're to better you. But yet, how do we live in a world of a restrictive God? He won't let me do this. And 
He won't, I won't follow God because I can't do this or I can't do that. Well, live in bondage if you want to. And God wants to free you. God has your best interest, amen. And this is what the psalmist understood. Go back to Revelation 4.11. We were created, everything was created for God's pleasure, amen. And so he made us, but listen, it's our pleasure too. Do you really think, now, this would be okay. It'd be okay if we, if, if we died and we were just flying around heaven, bowing before God, worshiping him. That would be okay, wouldn't it? That's what some angels are doing. That's what they were created for. But we weren't created for that. God says in Ecclesiastes that he, he's placed eternity or the world in our hearts. It's incredible what God has in store for man. And yet, again, fantasy world, <laughs> fantasy world, but that we love fantasy world. That's why these movies and all these other crazy things, they catch our attention, and yet God, reality, the word, and what's going to happen with us in the future, we don't want to know about that. He said, I mean, learn your commandments. Learn, God, why, why do you want me to do these things? God made us. He fashioned us. And so we need understanding. We need to know why God made us. What is our purpose? What is our purpose, folks? Well, I just told you what our purpose was. We bring pleasure to God. By the way, folks, our purpose is not soul winning. Soul winning is not our purpose. That's not our purpose. Our, our purpose is not to win souls to Jesus. Is it? Is that our purpose? Well, the fundamentalist movement made that our purpose. Now, should we be a soul? Absolutely. Everywhere I go, I want to tell people about Jesus. Amen. But that's not my purpose. What happens when I can't tell somebody about Jesus? I'm laid up in some hospital somewhere. Or I'm in some nursing home. Or I can't get out somewhere. Can I win souls there? What if I can't talk? What if I lose my voice? I mean, listen, your purpose is to bring pleasure to God with your life. Now, that includes telling people about Jesus because he told us to do that. Amen. But more importantly, with our lives and our lips. Now, our lips ought to be open, but people ought to be able to see our lives that we're children of God. God help us. Especially in this day. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding. Because I'm going to tell you what, if he doesn't give you understanding, you ain't going to know. So many people think they know, but they don't know. Only God knows, and we need to go to him. God, help me to understand your commandments. And then notice what he says here. I love this. In verse 74, he said, They that fear thee will be glad when they see me. <laughs> That's a good passage, isn't it? Are people glad to see you? I'll tell you what, those that fear the Lord. Now listen, folks. When I'm sinning, and when I was sinning, when I wanted to do my own thing, I did not want to be around other believers, especially those that are spirit-filled, walking with God. <laughs> do you? People don't want to be around people like that. Somebody who doesn't fear God doesn't want to be around somebody. Notice what he said. Because I have hoped in thy word. People want to be around people, spiritual people, when they're spiritual. Amen. But they don't want to be around spiritual people if they're not spiritual. They want to hang around people that are like themselves, that are not spiritual. David said, he said, they that fear thee, they that have an awe for thee, a reverence for thee, will be glad when they see me. Because why? I have hoped in thy word. What do we hope in today? What is our hope? What are you depending on? God, help us to depend on God's word. Just as Karen's testimony, as she said, learning how to depend upon God's word, whatever situation they're in or you're in. Did you realize, folks, there are a truck, almost a trillion, and it probably is, hopeless situations in this world. I just told uh, a guy that I went and met with today, and I mean... There's no way I can't, I can't meet everybody's needs. Although in my heart I want to. 
I can't. And once again, God reminded me, and I reminded him. He had never heard this story before of the old starfish and the little boy out there with all the starfish on the, on the, uh, the banks uh, of the sand. And he was out there throwing them back into the water. And some old codger, you know, had to straighten him out. He said, hey, buddy, don't you know that you, you, know, you can't save all the starfish there? Of course, the little boy didn't lose a beat, picked up one off the ground, threw it in the water, and he said he was sure glad that I saved him. So again, although we get overwhelmed with all the problems and the difficulties and all the different things, stay in God's word. God will help somebody. Amen. You know why? Because he's in the helping business. He wants to help. He has a desire. By the way, it doesn't matter if we know who he's helping. Amen. I guarantee you this, if you're in the word, God is going to help somebody through you, even though you might not ever know it. And that's fine. Those that fear the Lord are glad when they see other believers that have hope in God's word. You know why? Because, man, we're in a hopeless world. There's so many people out there that have lost hope. Matter of fact, they've lost hope in God's word. There's very few people that even hope in God's word today. It's always in something else. And we need to hope in God's word. It's what we have. It's what we need. It's all that we need. So David said, they that fear thee will be glad when they see me because I have hoped in thy word. And then notice this. Now, folks, you can't help when you come to this passage of scripture. I've given you these things and I'm going to give it to you again. Uh, over and over and over in the scriptures, you're going to find these three things. It's just the way it is in the Bible. Number one, what's this right here? I got, we all got one. This is your head. This is your head. This is where you gather knowledge, okay? In your head, in your mind, it's your intellect, right? And then what's this? Your heart. When you gather information into your mind and you begin to think about it, and just like, folks, listen, how in the world can you think about God making you and have a serious thought about it and not get emotional? That's insanity that the triune God made us and you don't have emotions in your heart. And saying, praise God, thank you, God, thank you. I'm walking in the house today and I said, God, as I'm thinking about this passage of scripture, I said, you could have made me something else. Now, is that true or false? I could have been an ant. Y'all say, I wish you were, so I step on you. I mean, this is, this is a problem with us. It really is. We think we make ourselves. You, God could have made you something else. I tell you, we all know this tonight. We ought to be thankful God made us a human being. Right? So we have to gather knowledge in the mind. And then our heart, our emotions are attached to that. And then there's a response with these right here. There are hands, and we call that the volitional, the volitional part, the I wills. And that's what you're going to see over and over in David's life. He, he gathered knowledge about God, and it was overwhelming. And he began to think and meditate about God, and it reached his heart. And then he chose, amen. You can't just go out here and do, you can just, oh, i I tell you what. I'm a, and, and a lot of people come down to the altar, come down to the altar, and, 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 and or, or go out or at home, they pray, see God, all these things. And there's nothing wrong with any of that. But at the end of the day, when we keep saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, but have no heart for it, have no knowledge of really why we're doing it, this is what he said, folks. He said, thou hast fashioned me and made me. Make me or, or, or give me understanding that I might learn thy commandments. Then he starts talking about 
The people that fear and, and, and because he hoped in God's word, he had emotional attachment to it. Then he says, I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right. Ain't that good? Do you think if we knew God's judgments were right, we would do what he says? If we really knew that in our hearts? I mean, first of all, in our minds, say, God, you're right. I almost said there's so many things that God is right about. <laughs> but God's right about everything. <laughs> there's so many things I need to learn that God is right. That's better, isn't it? David's learning that. In his walk with God. We're not halfway through. We're getting close because there's 176 verses in Psalm 119. But we're halfway through almost. But, but we said that this is Psalm 119 is a, really a, a big picture of David's young, middle-aged, and older life as he's going through sort of like a diary that he's writing down. He, he had to learn these things. He had to get it from God. He said, I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right. They're right, God. They're right, or they're righteous. And then notice what he says here. Thou in faithfulness hast afflicted me. <laughs> That's what he said. Thou in faithfulness hast afflicted me. Right? Now, here, what I believe he's talking about, I believe he's talking about that chastisement that God brings upon us. Now, through this song, he talks about affliction a lot. But aren't you glad God chastises you? It doesn't let you go on your own way. Praise God that he does that because he loves us. And he says, thou hast done this in thy faithfulness because God is faithful. You see, he's not like us. We let, we let some things slide. Well, I don't want to deal with that. How many of you ever said that before? I don't want to deal with that and deal with uh, our children or something. Well, God's not like that. <laughs> God in his faithfulness, he will afflict us. But he says this, he's not like a, a father there, uh, an earthly father. He, he does it uh, for our own sake that he might produce, the Bible says, the peaceable fruit of righteousness. God desires his children to walk uprightly and righteous. And folks, it's the best life. It's the best life, amen, a pure mind and heart and being sober and clear thinking. It's wonderful, amen. I was telling the guy today about a situation that happened to me this morning and throughout the day, and uh, God took my mind back to Mays Jackson, a message that this man preached 20-some years ago. How many of you ever heard Mays preach? Okay, y'all might remember, just one? Only one person? I've been on the radio a lot of times. I mean, yeah, I've saw him in person, but I, I, I've been on the radio. Uh, I heard this on the radio, too. This wasn't live. Um, but he just, 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 God used this to encourage me. And it might not encourage you, but it encouraged me. He said this old senior saint lady was in a church, stagnant, no, no movement, and, and, and the preacher was preaching, and she was, amen, amen, praise God, waving her white hanky, and, and uh, the preacher uh, told one of the deacons to go back there and tell her she needed to be quiet, and so they went back there and told her to be quiet, that she, you know, we don't do that kind of thing here, and, and uh, anyway, I started preaching again, amen, praise God. Praise God, you know. And so then uh, the, the preacher had two deacons to go and remove her out of the church. And so they went and they picked her up. And she wasn't going to move. She was going to stay in the church. And so as she was going out of the church, this is what she said. She said, praise God, praise God. She said, Jesus rode in on one donkey. I'm riding out on two. <laughs> I said, praise God. Hey, man, how does God do stuff like that? How does he do it? A clear mind, a sober mind, just giving me encouragement to keep on praising God. Hey, man, no matter what the situation is, it, it don't matter if nobody else is praising God, keep on praising God. Hey, man, hey, man, God help us. David said, I know thy judgments are right. He said, I, 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 thou hast 
in thy faithfulness, thou hast afflicted me. Why? Because God wants to bring the peaceable fruit of righteousness out of us. And then notice, he says, he said, let I pray thee thy merciful kindness be for my comfort according to thy word unto thy servant. You see, when God afflicts, he also brings mercy and kindness and love. He said, let that be my comfort is your mercy. Folks, you realize no matter how straight you are, no matter how much you're walking with God, you always need his mercy. Continually. You're never not going to need God's mercy, no matter how far along you might get in your walk with God. God, praise his name, we're fallible creatures, aren't we? We mess up, and yet God in his merciful kind. Now, folks, there's a difference in trying to mess up, doing things purposefully in your life and not listening to God, but walking with God and trying to do right, trusting God and still doing right. There's total difference in that. So, so many people take God's mercy for granted is what I'm trying to say. And, oh, well, God will forgive me. And da, da. Don't live like that. That's not the way God wants you to live. That doesn't bring pleasure to God. If you're constantly, every single day, consistently having to go to God and you won't live for him, that's not what God wants. God wants you to consistently not sin in your life. Amen. He wants to help you with that. So he says, let, again, and it's verse 77, same thing. Let thy tender mercies come unto me, that I may live, for thy law is my delight. God, what you say, I delight in. So many people, again, we're, we're rebellious, folks. We're rebellious in our hearts. And God's got to change that. Amen? But we, you know what we want to do? We want to change God. We want to make a God into our life. And he's not changing for you. He's not going to do it. He's never changed for anybody else. And if, if he did change, he'd cease to be God. Right? He's immutable. I, the Lord God, change not. <laughs> Amen. God's not changing for us. But praise be to God, he changes us. Amen. And you're like, wow, this is a miracle. This is a miracle. It's a miracle that God can take an old rebel heart like Bobby Shutt and give him a new heart and change him with his loving. By the way, it's the goodness of God that leads you to repentance, folks. It's the goodness of God. Listen, God could have put every last one of us into hell and he would have been just to do it. There's nobody who could ever stand before God and say, God, you're not just for doing this for me because I'm not a sinner. We're all sinners. God is just. What he does is right. And yet he's had kindness and mercy upon us. And David said, hey, when your mercy is what causes me to live or be able to know what living is all about. He said, for thy law is my delight. I enjoy God's word. All you got to do, folks, is ask yourself this question. Do you really enjoy God's word? Don't lie to yourself. God does not like liars. God hates hypocrisy. You realize that, right? Do you realize Jesus was hardest on the hypocrites more than anybody else, the religious crowd that tried to pretend as if they really enjoyed God and God's word, and yet they didn't in their hearts? God hates that. So what's the best thing for us to do? Get honest. God knows already, right? God, I really don't enjoy your word. But I know that I need to. Would you help me with that? Folks, listen, I'm just being honest, dead serious. I love God's word. There is nothing like it. It's amazing what God is showing me in his word. It's a blessing, praise God. I missed it. I missed it. I spend a lot of my time mechanically in the Word, mechanically serving my life, mechanically doing a lot of different things. You realize a robot can't love? God, God didn't make machinery, but the church sure is making it day in, making robots out of people. That's not what God wants. 
He wants true love, true joy, true peace. Amen. That's what he made us for. Amen. And, and there's only one person in all the world that has that. That's Jesus. And so when you have him, you have perfect peace, perfect joy, perfect love. And you can go to him and you can allow him to work that out in your life. Praise his name. He said, let the proud be ashamed, for they have dealt perversely with me without a cause. Have you ever been persecuted? Have you ever been somebody uh, persecute you for something that you didn't do wrong? He said, the proud, they, let them be ashamed, for they've dealt perversely with me without a cause. But this is what he said. He makes a conscious choice again. But I will meditate in thy precepts. No matter what somebody does, think on God and his word and think about your future with him forever. Praise his name. Amen. Number one, it's not going to last. It's not going to last. God said this world is going to burn up. God said the name of the righteous shall stand, but the name of the wicked shall rot. We need to understand that. No matter what they do to us, no matter what they say, it doesn't matter. We need to meditate and choose to meditate on God's precepts and his word. I will. Do you see that? You're going to see that all through the Psalms and all through the Bible. It's a choice. But listen to me, folks. I'm trying to help you. You're not going to daily make this choice unless first you have a clear understanding of what God is asking. And then having a, an emotional attachment to that, what he's saying. Hey Amen. You're not going to do it. Now, sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. God is looking for consistency in our lives. As far as trusting him and obeying him and what he's asking. David said, no matter what the proud do, it doesn't matter. I am going to choose to meditate. Think on the scriptures. And then notice what he says here. Again, talking about others. Let those that fear thee turn unto me. And those that have known thy testimonies. What is he saying? Let my fellowship be with other believers. Let my fellowship, my conversation. Folks, listen. I understand. There's nothing wrong with talking about things that you like. Okay? I understand that. I understand that you can talk about the weather. Lisa, what are some things you like? I'm sorry to put you on the spot like that. Birds. Birds. Okay, there's nothing wrong with talking about birds. Now, I'm not even going to ask Hannah. She likes cooking. Okay, there's nothing wrong with talking about birds and cooking. But birds and cooking can't be the dominant of your conversations. It can't be, folks. we got to get away from that. It's okay. I like birds. I like cooking. <laughs> okay, so we can have a conversation about that. But I love God. We need to be conversating about God. He's the greatest conversation there is. And by the way, he made birds, and he made it so you could cook. Correct? So shouldn't he be in the center of that? Shouldn't we see the birds and think on God? Hey, when we're cooking, my goodness. Now, you see some of these creations that this girl's young lady has made? Okay? Where did that creativity come from? Oh, well, she's just, she just got it. Well, where did she get it from? The Bible says you brought nothing in this world, you're going to take nothing out. And every good gift and every perfect gift coming from God. Amen? And so can we, here's the thing. Can we think on God in all our conversations? Yes, we can. Will we? Probably not. Let me tell you why. No understanding of our purpose. No real heartfelt to live out that purpose. So why in the world are we going to talk about God? We're not even, you know, we don't even understand that this is what we were made for. Right? And so we got to get back to that. It's got to start somewhere. <laughs> Amen. And I'm willing, I'm willing to say, God, start with me. Help me, God, that my conversation, you know, somebody says, how are you doing? Praise God, doing well. God's good to me. Let me share this scripture with you. Anything else? <laughs> That's okay. 
It's all right. Now, folks, you got to start somewhere. David says here, he says, he says, let those people that fear you, that love you, uh, the people of God, let them come to me. Let them turn to me because I have known and those that have known thy testimonies. And then I love this. This last verse is a really good verse to end this stanza. He says, let my heart be sound. That's a great word, folks. How many of you again? Again, folks. <laughs> How many of you love health? You know, I worked in a nursing home for years, and, and one of the biggest things that, that happens to you, and you guys can testify, maybe it's not happened to you, um, is you lose your taste buds, you know, you, as you grow older. And so in, in nursing homes, you know, when I worked, where we worked, you had to spice up the food and you had to make it a little more salty, you know. A lot of the folks are like, this tastes bland. I'm like, man, this tastes like a bowl of salt. <laughs> it tastes bland to me. Right? How many of you just love that? Just love that you, you lose things when you get older. No, no, no. You, you, you would like to be healthy all your life, right? Everybody would. This is what he's talking about. Let me be sound. Let me be healthy spiritually, right? Do you realize, I, I, I don't mind saying this over and over again. I've said it before. This is one of the, the things that God really got a hold of my heart some 20-some years ago uh, with a tree and water. You know the three reasons a tree Uses water, right? Four. What's, what's the first one? Why does a tree need water? There's three reasons. Nutrients, what would that be for? Life. life. Okay, that's the first one. Number one, a tree has to have water for life. Okay? Otherwise it dies. <laughs> what's the second thing? Growth. growth. Has to have water for growth. What's the third thing? Fruit. Fruit. Okay? Now, here's the deal with most people as a Christian. Now, we need the water of the Word of God. But you know most people are just getting enough water to just be on life support from the Word. They're not, they don't even really have life. It's, it's, it's artificial. I mean, they're, they're having, they have a breathing machine because they, that's how much the Word of God they take in. That's not the way it's supposed to be. You want more love, more joy, and more peace in your life? More water. More of the word. Not less of the word. There's plenty of stuff out there to get your mind into, isn't there? Isn't there, folks? Isn't there plenty of stuff to read and, and, and plenty of stuff to take in? Information. Inf We're in the information age, right? Right? Information overload, really. But what about Bible overload? <laughs> we, we spend so much time in all this other stuff that doesn't matter. Like, just like what we're going on through now, folks. You realize this is going to end. You, you realize, well, there may or not, may not be 2021. I don't know. We may not make it to Christmas. We might not even make it to Thanksgiving. That's tomorrow. <laughs> but you know, the Bible says clearly in, in, in a verse. Now, how many of you can quote Matthew 6, 33? Anybody quote that for me? I'll put you on camera if you do it. <laughs> Matthew 6, 33. Come on. Somebody... Don't be, don't be fearful. Seek ye, first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, I'll give you $5. Karen, we got $5. <laughs> we ain't got $5. Randy, we got $5. <laughs> How about you, Randy? You got $5? Now, anybody got any money? <laughs> I'm hoping whoever's got the money will quote Matthew 6, 34. Anybody? Anybody? Anybody out there? Matthew 6, 34. It's just as important as Matthew 6, 33. Just like you said, Richie, all scripture. Now, we, we love, again, to quote Matthew 6, 33. But what about Matthew 6, 34? We probably, really, the truth of the matter is, we probably should quote Matthew 6, 34 more so than Matthew 6, 33. Not more so, but it's all together. You know what it says? 
You know, I know you're back there looking. I saw you. I didn't say it, though. I know you didn't, but you're looking guilty. So I'm calling you out on camera. And blame it on your dad. Typical garden situation right here. Somebody else's fault. Sufficient? Is that what it says? <laughs> you should have read it. <laughs> Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. That verse, <laughs> every time I read Matthew 6, I had no clue what that meant. I had no idea. I kept reading, I was like, what do you mean by that? Never understood it until several years ago. <clears throat> There's enough evil in today than to worry about tomorrow's evil. That's what that means. Sufficient unto the day, today, is the evil thereof. To be constantly worrying about what might happen tomorrow. I almost said, Ethan, almost said, dude, you almost died. But that was yesterday. Today's today. You can die today. But you don't need to be worried about dying tomorrow. Because you might not make it to tomorrow. With all the things we think about. See, David says, let my heart, my inner being, my whole self be sound where? In the scriptures. In the statutes. That what? That I be not ashamed. So many people are ashamed of God and his word. God help us. I told John a couple years ago, I don't think I could have gone. Now, I could have. Now, don't get me wrong on this. I don't think I could have gone and stood for Christ with a bunch of these guys he's playing ball with at, 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 at um, uh, Carolina Christian. What, what is he, where is he at? Central. Central Carolina Community College with these ball players. Now, I could have gone and given a gospel presentation and Acted as if, man, I'm standing for God, you know. But I could today. I'm not ashamed of God's word. I know they're in. I know God's blessed me, praise God. In reality, it's not only in my head. It's in my heart. It's in my heart. Now, I still struggle at times, <laughs> like everybody else. But I know if God puts me in that situation where I can be a testimony for God, praise God. It's not, it's not just trying to act as if I'm something. I am something. When I say that, in Christ, not in myself. Let's close with this. I'm so thankful. I am thankful for this. That God does not love me in spite of me. This is a wonderful truth in the scriptures. Before I was saved, God loved me in spite of me. Today, God loves me because of me. But not because of me, myself, but because of who he has made me to be. I'm his child. What a blessing to know that I'm God's child. Amen. Amen. We search and search and search for meaning and life and all along. God says, here I am. I made you. I, I want you. Man, folks, the debauchery of this world, I, I almost daily, in the news, you read something about child trafficking. I'm dumbfounded by this. I really am. This bothers me in my being that people would take a child and children and abuse them for sexual and sensuality purposes. It's literal sickness and sanity. And that's in our America. This is, this is a multi-billion dollar business in America. That's insane. Let me tell you, 
judgment day is coming. So God said it'd be better. This is God's word. It'd be better for a millstone to be put on your neck and you thrown in the sea and drowned than to touch these little ones. It's a shame and a sham. And God has called you and me. Amen. To love them like he loves us. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing we can even do that. It's amazing we can love people the way God loves us. But we can because he said we could. It's got nothing to do with you and me. It's got everything to do with him. He said, they shall know I'm he whom the Father has sent by your love one for another. Man, the church got to start loving and loving in the right way. Amen. But we're never going to do that unless we're sound. Unless we're asking God for, for, for uh, trueness from the Bible, from the scriptures. You see, folks, listen, you're always, you're always, the devil, the flesh, and the world will always give you something better to do other than to soak yourself up in God's word and learn more about him. I'll tell you what we need to be busy about. We need to be busy about getting in God's word and let God change our lives. You say, we got time. We ain't got time. We ain't got time. It's now. Change. Change is what we need. And change comes from, from the eternal word of God. Praise be to God. He, he molded us and fashioned us. And he still is doing that. Let's stand on our feet. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for who you are. Father, there's nobody like you. We thank you that we are in your hands. And Father, that you have a true desire, uh, greater, far greater than any one of us, and all of us as that goes, put together to fashion us to your liking. What a blessing. I think about Hannah as she makes these uh, these creations, these cakes, these cupcakes, these uh, the different things, cookies and just foods in general, and how she spends time, Father, to make these things to her liking. She sees things that we might not be able to see, that we can't even point out. But she says, no, that's not quite right. How much greater, God, how much greater, God, do you know better than us? We yield to you. I put myself in your hands. I put these folks in your hands. I pray all of us would be willing to be put in your hands. That you'd mold us and make us. And help us to delight in your word and in thee. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> God bless you folks. Appreciate you. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you turkeys. <laughs>